Hey guys, it's Eric. Today is Friday, September 14th, 2012. In this week's video, I want to go through some trading strategies with you. And one trading strategy we're going to look at today is going to be weekly reversals and then looking to get on the long side or the short side. In this case, it's going to be a long trade. Um, but I want to use uh, MCP. And on the left over here, I have a weekly chart. And on the right is a daily chart. And so what I like to look at is I usually have the weekly chart up. And you can see MCP just had a complete, I mean, it's been decimated up from $80. Um, this was late last year, or excuse me, mid last year, all the way down to, I mean, we're now we're down in the teens, right? So, you know, when you're looking for reversals, there's a couple things that I look for. First of all, I really use candlesticks. I, I find candlesticks on the weekly chart to be much more um, accurate, I, I would say, or at least more powerful because it's a whole week of data and then you can kind of see on um, fine-tune your entries on the daily chart but essentially on MCP we had this continued sort of downtrend and we had multiple closes outside of the bands here and these bands are a modified Keltner channel which basically is an average true range so we'll just call them the bands at this point I've got my squeeze indicator here and I have a TTM wave indicator to kind of help me with uh, you know potential reversal so basically with with MCP um, you know, you had a little bit of a uh, reversal here. This was a big down day, uh, back down week, and we had a reversal here. But ultimately, what you're looking at is is a uh, Harami type candle formation. But the location of the Harami is very important. And when you have uh, a big down day, or in this case, a week, a down week, and now you you you're up the next week. You know, this definitely does not mean you're going to reverse. Uh, mainly because you're still at the lows of the of the huge sell-off candle. In this case, it looks like on the daily chart, this was kind of an earnings gap and crap type type play. But um, essentially, this is not anywhere. You know, you do not want to get long here. And when you when you fine tune the entry, you know, if you were looking at this week as a potential week as a potential long, that is really in this area on the daily chart. And on daily chart, like yeah, the A wave is kind of turning up. You're getting a little bit of positiveness on the squeeze. But you are still well outside the bands, and really, what I look for is I like to be trading, you know, above the 13 EMA, which is this purple line. This is also 13 EMA is what we use for our Keltner channel, um, and essentially we weren't even close to, to picking up a long play. And ultimately, this thing rolled over more. So this thing rolled over more. We kind of consolidated down here, and then all of a sudden, two a couple weeks ago, we had a reversal, you know, uh, weekly candle. So at this point, we reversed, and then we, we ultimately pull, pulled back to the 13 EMA, but now look what started to happen. You had the reversal. Now you can look for a long play. You have, you're, you're consolidating above the 13 EMA, and then ultimately this thing is, ends up kind of breaking out here. I mean, this is a, it doesn't look like a lot, but NCP, I mean, they're up over 5% today. Um, I was looking at this the last couple of days. I did not take a trade on this. Neither did our members. I actually didn't have NCP on the radar because I was... Um, you know, managing other trades going into FOMC this week. However, I, you know, once I saw this play, I looked at it last night and I was like, okay, let's see what happens in the next couple of days. So this, this is still a candidate for a long play. Uh, what I would say, you, still, you have kind of a inverse head and shoulders here that could potentially break out. But I want to look at a couple other things first. So um, when we look at, well, well, first, you know, we've established that a few, a couple of weeks ago, we had a weekly reversal. Both these indicators are turning positive. So now we know there's some momentum to the upside. And really what we're targeting is, is that mean reversion back to, in this case, $15, which is the 13 EMA on the weekly chart. So $15 is, is kind of up in this range, which, which sort of splits the difference between that gap from, from earnings. So um, when we look at this, we got a couple things we need to notice. First of all, um, gap window, uh, which was right here from earnings, that is going to be your first sort of resistance point. You kind of got came up to that, um, but you never actually touched it. And so today we actually touched it. Touched it. So now you've actually got a, a gap window uh, touch. Okay. So the other thing that that I'm noticing here, and this is very important, when using Fibonacci retracement, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We basically had this leg that this was the first kind of power leg up that told you, hey. This thing looks like it wants to reverse. This is these three candles are the candles that really made this weekly uh, reversal candle. And when we put a fib on that from that low to that high, 
you can see we basically pulled back, chopped around a little bit, actually almost did a 618 pullback, got back up into the 382 zone, and then we ultimately yesterday closed above that high. And our members know that once you have an impulse leg like this and you close above that high finally, that there's a 70% chance that you're going to get to this 27 extension. And it just so happens, you know, this is this is not a coincidence. It, it just so happens that the 27 extension coincides relatively well with that gap window area. And so now what we're looking for to, to really get on this trade, um, you know, you could look for a move to the to the 618. However, it, what I find it's usually best to see if you can get a pullback uh, back to the breakout area. So in this case, back to around, we'll call it $12.50. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen next week. I did not take this trade yet, but what I'd be looking for for MCP to get on the long side is if we can get a pullback back to around $12.50, possibly if you want to get aggressive, um, which, you know, with QE3 and all that out, you may want to get aggressive, but, you know, maybe you take a small trade at this gap fill around 1275, and then you add to the position around 1250. There's always a chance that this pulls back to the, the mean down here, which is uh, at this point $12, but I would say your, your, your breakout area, which at this point I, I consider 1250, that's where you'd want to get long. Now, if this thing just barrels into next week into the 618, then you just miss the trade, and that's fine. But uh, hopefully, the, you know, this video kind of help you uh, use multiple time frames, really kind of look for the reversal and kind of structure this trade so that you can, you know, potentially get back in or next time potentially get in right when it's consolidating before the next move up. So hope you enjoyed that video. You guys have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week.